Hey Defenders, welcome back. In this video, we are excited to bring to you guys our Sock Fortress Threat Intel offering. And throughout this video, I'm gonna show you guys how we can integrate it, not only with Copilot, but most importantly, how we can automate the Threat Intel enrichment of our Wazoo events that our Seam Stack is ingesting into the platform. So stick around and we'll jump into it. For those who have been playing around with Copilot for a while already, you guys should be aware of the Threat Intel button that is presented to you guys within the overview page where here we can submit a IOC value to analyze against the threat intel stack. Unfortunately, it does cost us some money in terms of running the infrastructure and making sure our threat feeds are up to date. So unfortunately, we do have to require a license for this integration. We've really targeted to make it as affordable as possible, especially compared to other threat intel feeds that are out there that can be very expensive. There are also no API limits on our Threat Intel feature either. So again, I wish we could make it free for you guys, but it does cost us money to run the infrastructure and also to maintain our threat feeds that were that are a part of our Threat Intel offering. So you guys will need to purchase a license, um, which if you hover over your profile and go to your license tab, you will be presented with the ability to unlock the feature here. Or if you do already possess a license, then you can upload it, which I am actually going to do right now for this demo. So once you do have your license loaded, uh, you should see your threat intel under your features card that we have here. And if you do decide to purchase it and then do want to unsubscribe, there is a unsubscribe button uh, in the bottom right if you select that as well. But let's actually start to test this guy out. So within Copilot, it is directly baked in. So if I go into run a threat intel analysis, um, a good domain to test with, which will always give you back a result, is going to be evil.sockfortress.co. So once I submit this, um, you can see back that we get, we get our response back. And here we see that this is a test IOC. Let's use like a domain, for example. So if I go on to Alien Vault, let me just go into browse. Um, Alien Vault's OTX is kind of like a live threat feed of, with a ton of indicators. Um, so here, if I, <laughs> they have 73 million, which, you know, you can always make the argument, hey, are these like, how many of these are actually actionable and are legitimate and are up to date? So when it comes to Alien Vault OTX, while they are a great offering and a great resource to use, uh, you can kind of take them with a grain of salt. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and select domains here, my indicator type. Let's see if we can find a fun domain. Uh, are these recently created? All right, here we go. Um, let's test with this XEO Pride something. Uh, I can also throw this into Virus Total. Let's see what Virus Total has against this as well. All right, virus total flags it as a hit as well. So here we get back a little bit of metadata, and we also have a link to virus total where we can also see um, the similar results, and you get some more data in terms of you know what virus total has on this domain as well. Now this is cool and all, but really the power comes from automating this. As a SOC analyst, I don't want to have to always uh, look at my, for example, DNS requests occurring across my endpoints and having to copy and paste domains to virus total or into alien vaults otx exchange you know we need something that can automate this and thankfully Graylog is a perfect solution for that so if you guys don't have already do make sure that you have our wazoo content pack because this is going to come pre-populated with the lookup tables and the pipeline rules that the Threat Intel lookup is going to take advantage of to actually do the analysis within real time. So if I go into Graylog here, and if I first open up my lookup tables here, now keep in mind this is after installing the content pack, so do make sure you've done that if you haven't already. I'll link down in the description below to that video, um, but you will see a data adapter for the lookup table of the Sock Fortress Threat Intel. And here you can see the uh, lookup URL. And then here we can see that we're passing a variable of a key. And we have this uh, header here for X API key, which is going to be set as def by default as to replace me. So what we're gonna do is once you have your license, um, we are going to update our, a our HTTP header with our appropriate license key. So I'm gonna go ahead and delete the pre-existing value and I'm going to set my name to x API key and then I am going to go into my license tab within Copilot and I'm going to copy the license value that I have. So I'm just gonna go ahead 
and copy and paste that as a value here. Select add and then update adapter. So now your Sock Fortress Threat Intel lookup table is going to be populated with a API key to actually valid to make requests to our threat intelligence. And then here we can uh, do a test lookup. So I can again do evil.sockfortress.co. And here we get back, this is a test IOC. So this is a good way to validate that your license key is still working appropriately. Uh, if we use our example domain as well, I can pop this guy in here, do a lookup. And here we get some more metadata as to the IOC. Now, this is cool and all, but we want to again, automate this. And where the magic that's gonna happen is within the pipeline rules that we provide for you guys. So if you go into your pipeline overview and select your Wazoo processing pipeline rules, and here you'll see all of our various stages that do our uh, parsing, our normalization, all the good stuff that makes the Grafana dashboards possible for you guys. But here, if we go to stage six, this is where we have the threat intel start to take place. So for example, a domain, right, is going to be triggered by a DNS request on my Windows endpoint, which we know this seems to be the example that I always use, but it's just an easy one. That domain or DNS requests are going to be made, are correlate to a Sysmon event 22. So if I select this pipeline rule, here what we're doing is defining for you guys the lookup table that we're going to use. So this is the Sock Fortress Threat Intel lookup table. And again, you don't have to fully understand this to take advantage of the Threat Intel. I'm just kind of giving you guys a deeper look into kind of what's happening under the hood. And what we're submitting to the Threat Intel is the data underscore when is the query name that comes within these Sysmon logs that our Wazoo agent is sending to our Wazoo stack. So what Greylog is going to do is take the value that's associated with that and make the request to the Threat Intel stack and say, hey, do you have any results for this particular value? And then if it does, it's going to pre-populate it with this threat underscore Intel under a prefix to the event, to the key name that gets generated within our seam stack, which will, which will be a lot more obvious here in a sec. Um, and this logic can also be applied for any type of events that you're looking to enrich with the threat intel. So this could be any firewall or any other uh, Sysmon events that you would like to include. But here in stage six, we've already pre-populated these for you guys, but you do have the ability to add the threat intel to any type of other events that you're ingesting into the stack. But, but let's actually look at a example. So. Here in my Windows box, uh, let me just open PowerShell and I'll just do like a, uh, I'll resolve that no malicious domain. So here I can do a PowerShell command line. I'll say resolve, if I can spell that right, resolve DNS name, name, and then let me give the actual value, which I can put from this guy. All right, so here on my Windows endpoint, I'm just saying, I'm doing a PowerShell command to just say, hey, resolve this domain name to its IP address. If I hit enter here, let's see what comes back to us. So here we get our answer as to the resolved IP address, but under the hood, this is going to invoke a uh, Sysmon event 22, right? So if I go into, so if I go into Grafana here, and let me just load the logs or, and refresh on my Windows agent, here we see our Sysmon event. So here we see me first in invoking the uh, PowerShell command here. So here we see our PowerShell command for result. Hey, telling my endpoint, hey, resolve this domain name. So here we see the full command, but then up above we see our DNS requests, our Sysmon event 22 DNS requests. And then if I look at the value, right, we see the actual value. If we start to scroll down here, we see the threat intel start to be pre-populated and our syslog level is gonna be set to that an alert of alert, which we can view within Copilot. We now have it automated to where, hey, this endpoint resolved this domain name and it is actually known to be malicious. We also pop out the virus total URL. Um, this URL doesn't require an API key. This is a publicly available searching virus totals uh, IOC database. We have not only ingested the log, but we've also done the automated threat intel enrichment with Greylog.
If we go back into Copilot and we, if we select our alerts, we should also see that same event. So here within my uh, Wazoo index, if I scroll down, we see our DNS request made by PowerShell. If I look at the meta details for this, uh, we see our thread and tail value set here. And the field that we are analyzing is going to be our when event data query name. If we go back into our pipeline rule, that is the field name that we are sending to the thread and tail. Notice that this matches up exactly to what we have here. If you're wanting to add on to the pipeline rules that we provide with other field names, um, take into account that the field name value, um, so this guy here needs to either be a valid uh, domain, SHA-256, MD5, or a valid IPv4 address. So it has to be one of those four, otherwise the threat intel is gonna spit back out to you, hey, we're not gonna analyze this, it's not a valid IOC. So do keep that in mind. We've looked to not only bring you guys an affordable uh, threat intel offering, but also one that you can automate with your Wazoo stack. This can also apply to firewall logs, uh, any third party API logs that you're bringing in. It can apply to, to anything. Graylog gives us the flexibility to define this lookup table to be used on any type of data that is being ingested and parsed through Graylog, which again is why we love Graylog and implement it within our Seam stack. You can also subscribe to multiple threat intels. You know, if you are taking advantage of another threat intel feed, you can stack our SOC Fortress threat intel on top of it. You don't have to be married to just using our threat intel, Graylog, also gives the ability to define multiple threat intel stacks or however you're you are doing your threat intel analysis you can stack on our threat intel or stack on other threat intels onto ours to give you access to more threat feeds so that's going to wrap it up for this video i hope you guys are kind of starting to realize not only why we use the technology and tools that we do to make up our seam stack but just how powerful really open source seam stacks can be and how flexible they can be in giving you unlimited options as to what you can do. I appreciate you guys hanging out with me and I will see you in the next one.